Welcome everybody to the digital download. And this week I'm the guest editor. So um, I'm the person that's setting the agenda and the, uh, the, the chat. Um, I wanted to say something at the beginning about why we do this. Because we're actually coming up, it's now, it's it's 11 months we've been doing this. And I just thought what? I'd give Is it really? It, yeah, la it was last April that we started. Wow. Um, and, and the reason, and the way that we do this was way back in COVID, um, I decided that we'd have a meeting rather than there was all these people on LinkedIn saying, we're going to do these stand by the bed things at 8.30 in the morning, or we're going to tell everybody what a wonderful day. But I thought, we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to do something digital. We're going to get together and we're just going to talk like we're at the pub or something. And we're just going to have a chat. There's going to be a no agenda, which the sales leaders all hated because there needs to be, has to be an agenda and we have to something to talk about and deals and stuff. But no, we're going to get together and we're going to talk and we're going to have a bit of a laugh. So what we're going to do? Well, we just 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 talk, and that's what happened. And then someone says, and I don't know who it was. We should actually do this externally. Well, it was Eric. We should, do <laughs> <laughs> we should do this externally. Why don't we just we do, we should spin up a, one of those tools that we've seen and actually talk? Because actually, people would get so much from it, and that's what we do. And we've been doing it for eleven months now. So much so, someone's even decided to copy us. Really? I mean, you can't get a better, a better accolade, is there, out there in the world of the internet than someone copying you? Is, is it Digital Download 2? The, the, the Digital Download Pop. I think it's actually called the Digital Download Pop Up, but it's in the in US time. It's on a Friday. It's late, later. Um, anyway, that someone's decided to, to, to copy us. They do, say that, they do say that imitation is one of the highest forms of flattery, but it's also it incredibly is, annoying. It? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they've even decided to copy the, the the breakfast burrito, even word for word. What? <laughs> I mean, the, it's... the big live the big live breakfast burrito. Other, other morning, morning shows I, that are I didn't available. bring a mug, did I? The the big live breakfast taco, because we don't <laughs> want to copy it exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so so today today you know this is as we all know this is is serious but a bit of fun as well. And so what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about, I wanted to talk about uh, CEOs on social media or leaders on social media. Should they be there? Should they be visible to their customers? Oh, am I answering the question already? Um, and, and and really what I wanted to do was was have that as a discussion because we'd actually, we had an internal meeting on Monday where this was actually raised about there was an opportunity, was the CEO on social, what was happening? And I think it's something that we should talk about and it should be, we, sh we should externalize it. Um, so I'm not gonna do, we, we, we decided a couple of weeks ago not to do introductions. So what I was gonna do was actually go around and just start, cause Eric's next. Um, and um, cause he's next on my on my list. In terms of you know, who's, your, who's your favorite CEO on social and why? Oh. Fantastic! Great, great. Uh, I, I, uh, I knew immediately when you posted this in our Slack channel as a possible theme. I knew immediately who was going to go for it, and, and I knew who you were going to pick as well. But... Yeah, absolutely. We all did. It's, I've got a bit of a mind crush on this on this particular fella because he's he's phenomenal. So uh, so so here's the story. Um, Chris Fleming uh, is the CEO of a company called Cyberhawk. Cyberhawk are industry leaders in uh, drones inspection and visual data. Um, <laughs> yeah, quite right, quite right, Jarvan. Yeah, absolutely. It's worth copying. Um, they are a global leader. Um, the headquarters split across Edinburgh in Scotland and Denver in Colorado. And they've got teams of people, specialists, that go out with these amazing bits of kit. They'll go out to oil rigs. They'll go out to nuclear power plants. They'll go out to... Uh, uh, power grid suppliers they'll they'll run a full railroad inspection for, for the length of an entire railroad between American cities they'll do a whole series of electric power grid inspections with these amazing drones they've got jeeps they've got all sorts of stuff and they're uh, they're able to to go around um, doing doing their thing Chris Chris is uh, in my view and it's arguable one of the leading CEOs on social media in terms of being a social CEO and I've got a little video to demonstrate why. Is that all right? Is that all yeah. right? Yeah, sure. run That's VT. Right. Sure run VT if I can uh, if I can get this up. Uh, you can maybe you can maybe put that that on for me, Tim, if you could. 
I can't. So, so this is uh, this is uh, Chris himself. This is what his profile looks like. He's stopping, collaborating, and listening. <laughs> Anybody want to? I want to start collaborate and listen yeah okay yeah um, very, yeah it's, absolutely they're a very serious company they do very serious stuff this is a lovely picture of him standing under the fourth road bridge when his guys were about to send up drones and he's having a bit of a he doesn't think by any means that he's iron man but he's having a little bit of a laugh with the fact that these uh, these drones are about to go and inspect a bridge they they inspect for safety they inspect for you know keeping power supplies on in towns and cities they do serious serious stuff um chris runs a serious company but Chris decided a little while ago to become, uh, for his organisation, to become a social organisation. Chris Fleming runs a multi-million turnover, big business global leader in a very, very sophisticated space. And he lives that all out on social media. All of it. I mean, all of it. I mean, Chris, as, I sh as I'll show you here, um, I know you asked for one, one bit of content, but I couldn't just... Uh, I couldn't just stick to the brief. It'll, it'll come. So that's his profile. So you will get, one day you'll get, here's me snowboarding through the mountains. Oh, and by the way, at the end of it, I nearly knocked myself out because I hit a tree. And this is this is where he's actually got a drone, isn't it? Following him or something. He's got a drone following him. Yeah, he'll he'll take one of the company drones. He'll set it on to follow me mode that tracks him. And that little drone just follows him. He does it with, uh, he does it with cars. He does it with all sorts of things. Uh, so you will get this lovely content mix because this man plays out his life and plays out his company life. His chairman retired recently, so he did a lovely tribute to him. But of course, they don't ju they don't just do that normally. They make a bit of a, a cake with him. He he's always promoting the team. Uh, here's a picture of the team out doing this lovely thing. Here's a new team member. She's just started with us. Julie is brilliant. Um, there's always a serious message. This is us out in the North Sea. It's not always, uh, don't let the sun fool you. This was on an oil rig in the North Sea. It's really chilly. Um, uh, we're going to visit a refinery today in, in Denver. What are we going to take? So he stops by a, a specific donut shop that sells kolaches and donuts to stock up and fill the Jeep full of donuts um, with the senior vice president of the Americas, Adam Sashuk. Um, here's a very technical thing. You can see that that as a, as a CEO, as an active social person, Chris gets a lot of engagement. Um, you know, we decided to go and film St. Andrews for St. Andrews and do a fly around the old course for St Andrews as a bit of a laugh and they, they post that um, you know amazing amazing stuff this is the kind of thing that his company stops people doing putting people at risk at height you can do that with drones here's us at our, our strategic retreat in Colorado you know he's playing out his entire company's uh, profile and their life on social media all the time it's always about the team it's always about tech you you I think the one he posted today was his son clearing the driveway of snow because Chris doesn't overthink content. If Chris is standing in line at an airline check-in, and uh, hi Simon, and there's someone in front of him with a with an interesting bag or whatever, that's his content for the day. He doesn't care if he gets five bits of engagement or five hundred bits of engagement. But Chris's network get behind him and support him. As you can see, this particular post got two hundred and fifty thousand views, three thousand likes. Two hundred and fifty thousand views. Two hundred fifty thousand views all at him, all at his company, all at his company profile, pulling through to his website. And this is just a, a, a bit of nice information about a wind turbine blade that's split into two halves before it's connected together. It's the kind of thing that they do is they inspect these. Um, the interesting thing that about is Chris is, I know, absolutely. It's like half Look pipes, isn't person. it? Inside. You can see the little person in the blade there. Yeah, totally. So they do, they do fly alongs with these. They fly up around about them when they're working to make sure that they're not entangled or, or uh, mean me up, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but the thing is, the thing is, Chris, Chris posts this, 3,000 views, uh, 250,000 views, 3,000 bits of interaction, all with industry people, new recruits, new investors, new clients, new prospects competition suppliers whatever it might be but he posts again the next day and the next day and the next day because chris fleming is a modern ceo that knows playing out his commercial personal life and blending the two together and giving us that middle section is key here's the genius part his cfo his cio his cro the head of sales the head of marketing the head of technical the sales team the marketing team the technical team all do it too <laughs> And is it all on uh, LinkedIn or is he using other? Oh, they're across, just like any good social seller, they're across Twitter. Um, he's particularly good on TikTok. Um, uh, but as a, as a mainstay for their company, 
um, they use for their for their sort of like social play out that they're doing. Um, it's LinkedIn and Twitter together. Some of the team are into TikTok. They've got a company Instagram page as well. Um, you know, that's that's not the, uh, you know, a lot of us, he'll tell you the best post they ever had was the one that took the least amount of time, had the least words on it that resulted in the most conversations and the most work. But Chris will regularly get 150,000 views. Well, they always content. say that the, the best film that John Wayne ever did, he only did nine lines, didn't he? There you go. And there and actually, go. the the better the the be, the less he the less John Wayne spoke in films, the better people actually um, so, thought thought the film was. So I mean, you know, sometimes less is more. Oh, absolutely. Well, John still, Wayne still... certainly, but his best films uh, wasn't, wasn't even in. Point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I still, I still say today, I'll be asked, I'll be asked um, occasionally, what was the best piece of content you put ever put out, and it was a twenty-one word post with three hashtags with no pictures and nothing else. Twenty-one words. That resulted in four conversations and a proposal and a purchase order. It's the best piece of content I've ever put out. Why? Because it was the least amount of effort, and it resulted in actual tangible results and conversations, and it led to revenue. I still think that's the best post I've ever put out today. So, 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 just just zooming in on on Chris though, Eric. I guess this is just he is just posting this stuff. It's 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 just push stuff, is it? <laughs> He he is he is thinking about this. This isn't this might seem like rich and colourful and diverse and that he just flips his phone and does anything. He's got a plan. He's got a plan. He farms every single element of that. So those, those And it's uh, and it's what? He's got a marketing team, a PR company doing it for him. <laughs> does it all himself? As the team He does it himself. Team. Does it himself. This is this is not coordinated. This is not done for him and you know, go and post this. That is a selfie of him and Adam in the shop buying donuts on the way to refinery. That was one of the days where he just flipped something that wasn't particularly planned. But I know Chris, so he probably said, I know we're going to a donut shop on the way to refinery. That's going to be my content for today. Uh, all of this is farmed. All of this is self done. He takes the time in his day. So there you go. They realized they realized the benefits of being a social organization. They realized that the revenue benefits, the, the market share, the digital dominance benefits were too much to give away. So therefore, we have to change the way we work. So that, that nonsense meeting that we usually have where we jump on and we talk about sales leads every day and SQLs and MQLs and all that, why don't we scrap that? And for 45 minutes per day, we'll meet as a senior team and talk about content We'll talk about views. We'll talk about themes. We'll talk about you know what we're trying to push towards. We'll talk about our target verticals. Hashtags we're using that way. A CEO of an organisation sitting with his team talking about which hashtags are paying off for the organisation today. I've got a bit of a man crush on Chris Fleming. <laughs> <laughs> and understandably so. Understandably so. And I'm not. I'm not even sorry. I'm not even shy about. It. Yeah, so I think his uh, uh, profile banner looks like the cover of an action movie or like a poster <laughs> i feel like he's like there would be two drones in each of his hands and like i see an explosion happening behind yeah to him. totally yeah behind it is like there's like fire comes up behind next yeah. yeah as he starts to levitate higher than the drones um, mm -hmm. a lovely guy australian go and read his profile he was on a podcast recently where a bunch of people said you're about you're about story and your experience section it's like a story from when he worked on a farm right all the way through all the troubles he had when he was a kid, right all the way through to getting into inspection, becoming a police officer, bizarrely, moving to Scotland where he lived in Edinburgh for 17 years. His profile's a joy to read. It's a bit of a masterclass in how... So you asked who, who are the CEOs that impress you on social today? I would say this guy's in the top, in the top, uh, top ranking. I would put him forward in any fight situation. Fantastic. Do you think he can? Do you think he can actually? So is he measuring the the commercial impact of the effort from him and his leadership team? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I don't want to get into the, the the micro specifics of it, but they can they can measure they can measure company direct company improvement and change from when they started doing this, and also now that they're really good at it. They've been doing this now for a couple of years. They've also been able to go. Well, this this hasn't been quite so effective, so we need to change tack. And we need to change our tone. Like recently, they came back and said, um, um, "You know, this has happened, and this has happened." And we rejigged the direction a little bit and spurted up the team again to, to go in a particular direction with stuff. So it started to pick up again. So they're monitoring and measuring improvement results. That's everything from market share, conversations, 
um, inbound, uh, proposals out the door, work one, and you know, you know, so so they're able to measure everything, and they do measure everything. Nice. Did the other executives follow suit after he had been doing it and saw his own success, or did they all start? They all started at the same time. They all started at the same time on the same. He was quite. Chris was quite curious, socially curious before. So curious. So yeah, do you like it? So <laughs> tough crowd. <laughs> socially curious. Um, Chris was quite socially curious before. It's because they're south of the border, mate. Yeah, exactly. Um, he was quite socially curious before, and he was doing some things. Um, he'd put out. I think there was this famous thing where he he just put out. A, you know, and I think the. The reason the reason we got into a conversation was he said I've just posted last week a picture of Edinburgh when he lived in Edinburgh and it's by a local artist and it's had fifteen hundred likes and something like you know uh, seventy five thousand views. What does that mean? Why has that happened? And what can I do with that? Mm. Because I'm doing all this and it feels great. Um, one of the one of the fundamentals is he's a very sociable guy. Yeah. Do, he's an, do, he's a, he wants to be an entertainer. Do, do you do you think that do you think that there's an opportunity for companies? You know, there's a lot of you know we're going to go through a whole bunch of CEOs that are putting out content, but Chris seems to be getting something from it. Do you think there's an opportunity for all CEO, CEOs and and um, leaders within business to 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 capitalise on this? Oh, I think the opportunity is there. Whether they have what it's going to take, the commitment and the personality to carry it off, I think is the debate. And that and, and, and that then leads on to that leads then on to a horrible conversation about boards positioning executives that are able to operate like this in a modern world. Um, so is every is the opportunity there for every CEO to behave like this and perform like this and reap the benefits? Yes. Um, is it is it naturally is it natural to assume that every CEO will and can? I don't know. That's a that's a, that's a great point. Uh, I think definitely, um, you know, this is the, he, this is exceptional. I mean, what he's doing. Obviously, he's been uh, well trained and coached. <laughs> the um, and but to that point about other CEOs, right? You know, and I th I think you. I'm not sure if I heard it exactly, but I think what you said there was that. You know the que the question is: Will other CEOs be able to do this? And does this become something that boards or uh, are start to look for in CEOs? The ability to connect virtually and do this kind of social activity. Like, if you can't do it, then you are kind of putting your organization at a disadvantage. Great point. Isn't it? It's a. It's a bit like the the way that leadership has changed over the years, isn't it? We 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 laugh about the Victorian factory manager. Um, we've all worked with one. Some of us may have even been that person, where we've stood there. Some with are still working with one. And we stopped, stood with a stopwatch and said, you know, you know, wh why are you leaving? It's only five thirty. You, you haven't started work yet. You know, and those sort of things. And what we've done is that we've had to change and evolve because business has changed and evolved, and there's been there's been expect, expectation that there's been that change. Should should we should therefore an ability to have that social and that connection is that something that should be now a, a, a leadership attribute? I think I think absolutely. I mean, the the key um, is that you know it's something can, that can be learned. It's something that can be coached. It's it's just like you know um, the difference between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset, right? Um, I love that content there from Jess. It's nice. Oh man, what a quote! Yeah. Content, and there's stand by for six content. blogs coming out about that on Monday. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's yeah. really good. Um, you know, so so that's that's the question. I mean, if you don't, if you're if you're a CEO and you you're just I can't do it. You know, and we encounter that in coaching people all the time. This is just something that I can't do. Uh, you know, we, we got to change the mindset, right? Yeah, that... isn't, isn't the challenge that they don't see why? You know, if you look at the mega successful big corporations, they're corporations where 
the founder of the business, so Elon Musk, he still invents things that happen within Tesla. You know, Bill Gates, up until quite recently, still did coding within Microsoft. Mark Zuckerberg still codes within Facebook. Uh, and and they're, they're, they're using those skills. And part of what the CEO of that kind of organization has done is they've used their skills in terms of fame to drive recognition, visibility, and ultimately sales. And I think a lot of the challenge is when the CEO says, or, or what goes wrong is when the CEO says, actually, I'm not in a sales role, that's your job, Leonard. You know, you need to yeah. go and sell this. And actually, the person that is at the top of the organization, they should have, or have, or are perceived, rightly or wrongly, as being the person with the most expertise, the most visibility, the most fame, the most reach, so actually, organizations need to embrace that and say, well, that's your role as the figurehead of the organization. So go out there and be a figurehead. You know, go out there, and put yourself on social because you will get much more traction than me, somebody that's working in dispatch will get. Yeah, I think also they, um, they, don't, they don't see it as a strategic initiative. They think social is still tactical. It's about mm -hmm. photos of your lunch and yeah. <laughs> meeting up with people. Yeah, I mean, that, woo, so many great points. Um, <laughs> Eric, 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 I think, made, made the point, well, at least while he was making the point, it made me think that, you know, social is not something that should be occurring in a department, you know, that yeah. a, that's a social media person does, right? It needs to permeate the entire organization. It needs to be you know, at the CEO level and all other levels. Okay, so so that's number one. And then the point that Adam was making is a he, it's a really, really astute point, which is that there's a big difference between founder led companies and companies that are not founder led. There are companies that um, are led by, you know, managers that might be two or three uh, generations removed from the founders of the company. And um, some guys Bain wrote um, a book called, the I want to say it's like The Founder's Mindset or something like that, uh, where they talk about the difference between founder-led companies. And it's all around this idea that the founders have this passion for the company uh, that the managers don't, and then they sometimes lose some key uh, things that are really important for the culture. So uh, lots of interesting, lots of good stuff to think about um, in terms of, you know, growing your company. Did you hear about the, I haven't looked it up myself, the tweet that Bain got in hot water for? The picture no, that they shared? This week? Um, <laughs> no, I guess, I think it was actually on International Women's Day. Oh. And oh, I think... Well a, a picture of their board. And there were yeah. no women? Oh, yeah. And there were no women. <laughs> I think it was all, it was all white, um, um, middle-aged uh, middle men. <laughs> That's hilarious. I, I saw something similar. I was looking, you know, at there was, there were, this company was talking about, you know, ESG. And then I looked at the picture and it was like literally all white men like, sitting around. I don't think it was that, uh, but oh my goodness. It's, it's, uh, or I, I forgot I'm on, I'm on live. I was looking for that book. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a little, a bit tone deaf there. I, so when we talk about having a fixed mindset and a growth mindset, especially for executives who have built their career around and like almost molded who they are as a person to fit being a CEO or being in an executive, um, they kind of embody like I am a CEO and this is how we know CEOs present themselves. I think it's important to acknowledge you were right in doing it that way up to this point, five or 10 years ago, absolutely. But now this is the way, now yeah. this is how, so it's just, it's part of continuing to grow and evolve your career. It's not that what you did was wrong and it's not that like, that's for someone else. It's just like, this is how it's done now. Yeah. So do it's it. Getting, yeah. It's getting to the core of what, of the issue for why organizations are not transforming. The, they're not adapting to these technologies. 
they're not, I mean, pe the customer's behavior, <clears throat> people's behaviors are tr changing dramatically as a result of these pervasive technologies. And the leaders of these organizations who went to business school in the 80s and 90s they're like they're yeah, not right. they're they're not they're not like they're, uh, they're not seeing it they're just totally missing how the impact of these technologies and therefore they're not adopt they're not adapting their behaviors to you know the time it's this whole it's the same issue with the compelling people back into the office it's the exact same issue so that in any way you're 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 like furious about this or like I just I mean it's just whole thing. it's it's kind of mind blowing <clears throat> when you think about it because there it's, have it's been bizarre, every man. every single consult major consulting firm has said you need to adapt to the new changing di di digital world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so you glad you've got pants on. Yeah. I'm so every, glad you've got pants on. <laughs> Can I go back to this comment from uh, Jess, please? <laughs> I got, I got. <laughs> Bag. <laughs> oh, okay. That, I mean, that's absolutely it, isn't it? It's not just external, it's internal as well. It's leading from the front and having your troops rally behind you and going into battle. And she made another comment where she said, um, lead by example, not by the book. You know, and, and I think that's so true. You know, it's like when if you were a parent that smokes and you told you, tell your children not to smoke, your children will smoke. Not, it's not because they haven't listened to what you've said. It's because they've watched how you've behaved. And this is absolutely the same thing that goes on in companies, isn't it? You know, if if, if the, the chief exec says it's really important that you're on social and they are not on social, it's really important that you engage people to promote the company in a positive way and they don't then it simply doesn't happen because people are scared. Yeah. So I, I like this post here by, from Mark. Um, and, and Mark it isn't the CEO, but he's the chief operating officer, of, of, officer at Barclays. The thing is, is that he's actually being authentic. Now, I suspect it's actually written by a PR agency. Um, but he's actually saying, this is my first post on LinkedIn. Engaging on social media is not something that comes natural to me. Over the last years, da 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 da. Um, but he's saying, you know, I'm. Uh, people are asking me and, and, and telling me that I need to do this. Um, and then he goes on, which it goes into a little bit of a, um, a of a pitch and a, and a brochure. And of course, what he got is a, a photo of him with a suit and tie on. Um, but maybe that's what you still wear in Barclays. I don't know. Um, but the fact of the matter is that he's trying and he's and he's and he and he's giving it a go. Um, and that's what I liked about it is that there's yeah. lots of things I can sit here and go, well, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. Yeah. But actually, come on, guys and girls, this this that. is this is time. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's proven that you know McKinsey, Gartner, Salesforce, HubSpot all say you need to be on social. So get on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It tra you can transition like just one step at a time. You don't all of a sudden have to change your profile picture from a suit and tie to one where you're like on a jet ski holding a beer. Like yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a session next week with a former Fortune 500 CTO, major a CTO of a major global brand where that's I'm delicious. going to tell him exactly that because he's I can tell that he's not moving forward because he thinks he needs to be like me. I'm like, no, you don't need to be like me. You just need to be a little different and begin to make a move, right? Outside of that comfort zone where limit, you limit. Limit. You're, you're, hard, you're hardly, you're hardly uh, like, you've hardly got, you've got beautiful written content. You make lovely videos from the heart. You, har you hardly stand there in a spangly jacket. You don't wear any wigs. I haven't seen a wig. I've never seen a wig. You might. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, you produce. Maybe, you maybe, produce... maybe you need to change them, and get some wigs. Rich and diverse, insightful content. I mean, why wouldn't anyone want to be like you a little bit? Well, it's a little, it's a little intimidating, right? Because you know he's <clears throat> coming from the perspective of like ultra conservative, 
suit and tie, white shirts only, like that type of environment. And he's wondering how his peers, other Fortune 500 C, uh, uh, CTOs and, um, you know, partners at McKinsey are going to respond to him stepping out. of. So there's a lot of fear, not necessarily, you know, I don't want to say it's irrational. I mean, I just want to say there's a lot of fear around being a little bit different when your entire career has been about conforming. Yeah. And, 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 and that's, that's, that's a big change, macro change that's uh, occurred as a result of the creator economy, right? Because yep. being this, it used to be, we all want to look the same. <laughs> <laughs> now you've got to look different. You, you know, and that's a, that's a, that's a big change. Um, and it requires a lot of motivation for um, for for people. This is a this is a great piece of absolutely. My goodness, yeah, yeah. And it holds when the management or when the executive team is resistant to it. It goes even without saying. It holds back the other team, the sales team, and maybe they'll they'll encourage. Oh, marketing should be on social. We need a social presence. This and that. But if everyone else feels like this is not what our leaders are doing. If you don't lead by example, then it's not the culture that your people aren't. I, I presented to, I, I presented a conference in um, New Zealand on Wednesday. And um, one of the questions that came back was, our sales force don't want to use their LinkedIn profiles for business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and, and that, and I, and they said, well, what, what's the response? I said, well, Two things. One is your leadership has to um, show leadership, and, and 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 actually, the reason why they don't want to do this is because they think what you're going to do is force them to be, become walking adverts, and nobody wants to do that. What people want to do is that they want to be themselves and they want to be authentic, but they know that the rules or the rules seem to be you've got to you've got to be a walking brochure. Yeah, the, the rules are all and about you can't do this, you can't do that. Not yeah. you can do this, you can do that. And that's the that's a big challenge. I didn't mean to do this the other day, but it just happened when someone said to me uh, live about you know, well, it's it's about being professional, and I said, can you can you help me out here and can you define professional for me? Have you ever asked Have you ever asked anyone that define professional? Boring is what they mean. No, but then but watch them then go, yeah, but well, you know, like like kind of like kind well, of like ties are so twenty twenty. I mean, you know, who who wears ties anymore? <laughs> I wore a tie the other day in a video. Can I, can you were asking funny... you were taking the piss. Yes, I was. Can I tell you a funny story about that, which has just come in, just yeah, come yeah, in yeah, right yeah. now. A client, of, a client of mine, the lovely Andy Robson, I thought this would tickle you, Eric. I've just had a new contact, someone that requested to connect with me. Um, I did. I, I connected with them, and, and immediately they started selling to me and pitching to me. I copied the link to your brochures video and sent it. She's Not only did she not reply, but she's blocked me. <laughs> That's from Andy. Fact. She's blocked me. <laughs> brochure. 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 Um, this is exactly yeah. what's happening. So, Britain, Alex, do you, go, do you want to go next? Yeah. Yeah, I can go next. I, I just want to drive it on because we've only got another 20 minutes or so. Yeah. And I can... Uh, let's have a look. I can link my two pieces of content. Cool. That. Oh, unable to share screen. Oh, no pressure. We're just going to sit in silence and watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you got a Mac, you have to give um, uh, permission your permissions in the um, settings. Everyone's which, watching. Which one is? You're going to do. You're going to do some ASMR to stand in. Yeah. I'll do some ASMR. It's funny because when content's up, we can't. We're all chomping at the bit, talking over each other. But the second we're waiting on the next one to pounce, it's just. Yeah. yeah. We, well, I'll, I'll, I could. I could go. With my settings. Okay, you go. You go next. While um. I'll go while Alex is um. Okay, so I'm. I'm going to share um. And I really, I, I debated about what to share and what um, to uh, for my 
uh, posts because I had I had something else. But I really like what this guy Jared McNaughton is doing. He's the CEO of a health plan out in California that is targeting uh, lower income folks who um, you know to 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 uh, join the health plan. And um, you know while he's not doing everything I'd love to see him doing on social media, he is doing some great stuff. And I just picked out three things that he's doing that I really like. Number one, I can trust that this profile is him and that he's the person on the other end of the screen that I'm communicating with. And that's a big deal. It's something- It is a big deal. You know, like, I don't think people fully appreciate that when someone reads your profile that's been obviously written by someone else because it's in the third person. I don't know how many people who stand up and say, you know, other than, Queen, the queen, right? Um, you know, Linwood Ross is this, Linwood Ross does this, and he's been, I mean, it sounds crazy. Imagine if you went to a networking event and that's how you were talking. This is obviously Jared. It's in first person narrative, and he's talking about what he does as the CEO and what his responsibilities are. It's very clearly him who's written this. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, we can trust that it's him, very important. The second thing that he's doing is he's encouraged people who work for him, I think, to post on social media because this is his director of community health. And he's uh, received something from his partner celebrating his birthday. He's posted it on social media. And guess what? The CEO had said, happy birthday, my friend. He's supportive of his team being on social media. Love it. Absolutely love it. Obviously, other people, I mean, there are lots of people from his company that are posting on social media. And this media. is connecting, this is connecting with the people who work for him. Yeah. But absolutely. also showing that, but also showing that externally. So if you're looking to go and work for that organization, you go, mm, that looks like a nice place to go and work at. Absolutely, which which is a great lean into my next comment, which is the culture comes through in the posts. OK, so we've got two people who are on his team that are using social media to recruit. OK, the vice president and chief compliance officer, IEHP culture is truly one of a kind. And it's one of the many reasons I've discovered why I love IEHP. Come join me in our mission to hear and inspire the human spirit. Okay, I believe it. I believe it, not just because he said it, but because of the other things I've seen occurring on social media from other people on the team and the CEO. It's not just a chief saying it, right? And guess what? If you're someone who's considering IEHP as a, as a place to go work, you're not only seeing what this guy has written, you're seeing what everybody else is doing. And you're saying, you know what? That does look like a culture that I wanna be a part of. I wanna be able to post things on social media and share what I love about my company and what I love about my job and be encouraged to do so. I got people at every or level of the organization doing it. Here we go, talent sourcing specialist, right? This isn't his only post. He's got another post where he was at a uh, at an event where they were recruiting people he showed himself there we had a great time you know that's how you use social media to get that external to see what's going on inside and want to be a part of it i absolutely love it fantastic love it Lenwood. do you want to go next brentney because i can see from the screens on alex's glasses the reflection that he's starting to still sorting his stuff <laughs> we can put on some yeah. i can put on some <laughs> uh, I'm afraid that mine might do the same thing, so I have screenshots. It could be a race between Alex and I. Take a time, guys. Slight intermission, folks. <laughs> might want to nip to the bathroom or make a cup of tea. <laughs> well, I think actually mine is a good segue from Linwood's, and yeah. I'll just I'll just share the. Um, it, 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 and it wants to close uh, Chrome and restart. So I think I'll just when when I, when it's my bit, I'll just do it without the screen share. Is that a, is that a Mac, go. Alex? Yeah. Ah, see. It works. Yeah. If you send me the send me the link, really. Alex, and I'll share it for you. Send it to me. It's surefire. I've got Windows. I'll just fire it straight on. 
Tim, Tim, would, would you just would you just put Eric back in the waiting room, please? Hi. Yeah. Hello, Simon. Yeah. Um... Better in here. Much better in there. Let's see. I think if you biscuits? hit later, I think if you hit later, it will let you. But I'm gonna go ahead and share. Cool. Um, so, because that's what I did. It wanted me to restart too, Alex, and I hit later, and now here we are. Uh, but okay, so to Linwood's point about it, it becomes the culture. It's great for recruiting. My there are two CEOs, both women, who I look up to and I'm inspired by for the same reason. I'm going to share them both. The first one is Charlie Safro. She leads. She's the CEO of a recruiting company. But both of these CEOs, they show up for their people. Like their type of leadership comes through on their profile and their type of posts. Like it is very obvious servant leadership. They talk about things like they're not afraid to call out things that aren't being done right, things that need to evolve um, in terms of we've talked about it on here before how employees are cared for, the way they work, you know, whether it's work from home or they'll either, they'll share parts of their life, family stuff, mental health, therapy, like they share it all. And the best part is they aren't afraid to be very unapologetically a woman. They'll use emojis. They'll be like, they're not your typical CEO and but what is a typical CEO, you know, and the result comes from that is tons of engagement, hundreds of posts, you know, they both have Charlie has over 40,000 followers. Her company has 90,000 followers, the company page, wow. all the posts get hundreds of comments and likes and it's immediate like these people like I'm one of them, I look forward to their content and it, and it, people engage and it's immediate. So clout or the other one is Amelia and she has 90,000 followers on LinkedIn wow. and she posts about just a wide range of very like I don't want to say controversial, but just things that are not typically looked at as being professional or accepted. And she talks about how since she started and grew uh, her company, Clout, and I think they're up to like 20 employees now, this has all happened just within a couple of years. And she was able to scale this, her, her brand, her company off through social. Now they have, you know, 20 employees plus super strong personal brand. She gets like, uh, she gets almost like a thousand bits of engagement on every post. Um, but as to Tim's point early on, they run these pages, they post themselves. And yes, it does matter when you can feel there's like a person behind it. When I first connected to Amelia, maybe like six months ago, I think she had 70,000 followers. She accepted right away and she sent a message back to me. Charlie, she has 40,000 followers, hundreds of people in her messages all the time. And she is probably one of the most responsive, helpful, kind leaders that I have ever seen. Like if you asked her, if you reached out to her for help on whether there was anything in it for her or not, she would be on a call with you within a day. And they just continue. They use this to connect and serve with their people. And it's just, it's very inspiring. They're not trying to like fit any certain type of mold. And I love that their communities like are rewarding them for that. <laughs> Daniel needs, it. Daniel needs it, attention. Yeah. So <laughs> No, he runs the millennial, the millennial marketing podcast. He's actually really awesome. He gets oh, he doesn't want to talk to me, way, does he? He's like a. a <laughs> What'd you say? I said he doesn't want to talk to me. Then is it? Does he? Uh, he might. He probably would. Brittany, great, great examples. Um, yeah. 
and there was a, a question um that there was a, a piece that mark said earlier on was that is professional does professional equal um uncontroversial what, what, what's mm -hmm. professional and what is professional today what is it what is it well it's mm. really really hard to so my, my definition is whatever i want it to be yeah whatever i want it to be and you know like like can you be funny and serious of course you can can you be can you be uh, self-deprecating and successful of course you can can you, you be relatable change? and accessible relatable and accessible yeah I, yeah yeah my goodness my goodness so so all of these lines are blunt now and it used to be that we had to be suited and booted and and just like walking talking brochures and speak like we we're trying to get on the apprentice and uh, and that we're 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 all about you know just like we're going to vomit up uh, the mba every time we get into a boardroom um actually now i think people are realizing that the the person behind the mba and behind the, the the shirt and tie and behind the stiff corporate is actually who we want access to you know and, and we can sniff it out now when, when when you hear the when you hear the the, the polished brochure wear i think and I'm, I'm 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 not just from my own perspective from my client's perspective from my friends family and colleagues perspective i think we're getting to the point where we're going boo boom we're throwing tomatoes at this now we want to see <laughs> yep. the person not the brochure um i agree yeah and, but i actually I, mm -hmm. I and i think that's been happening um that's been happening for a couple of years but, the, but yeah. there's now a groundswell of support behind it yeah. now where there was a few people now there's more and now more people are turning around i've just started i've just started watching the walking dead and i'm i'm getting absorbed into the <laughs> you're all going to become uh, is zombies that, is that yeah. is that on linkedin <laughs> no it's on disney <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because do you guys yeah. remember no carry on, carry on carry on no linkedin is is telling people this is how to do it and the the platform is saying remember like a couple months ago when i sh tried to share that commercial it's like this is professional now and there wasn't one tie there wasn't one suit it was like you know people with i don't know their natural hair people in like dresses people walking down street showing their tattoos and piercings and having kids on their hips and it's like this is professional like being human is professional and it's welcome here there's a you know there's a there's a couple of uh things that i want to say number number one you know i I, I see the, um, when I, when I think about these executives that make, and, and this is actually, gosh, this is really controversial. It may lose me some business, but <laughs> there, there, there are, there, there are these CEOs that are making hundreds of millions of dollars a year that actually don't want to be that accessible. They want to be far yeah. away from the yeah. people that they serve. So uh, that is- I think the thing is they don't serve them though, do they? Yeah, that's a that, great that's point. point. That's a great point. So so that's, that's problematic because th the reality is that because of social media, you can get so close to your customers. You can, you can be so close to them it's it's all about wanting to be close to them right my other point i forgot well I'm not it'll come to you. very well put yeah very well. it'll come to you oh, it's, wait. A, it's a nice segue lenwood because um ed bastian is the ceo of delta airlines and um as we all know the airlines have been in a bit of a tough spot the last few years um and uh when he was recognized as you know one of the top 10 on social two and a half years ago, he had 44,000 followers. Ooh. He's now got 220,000 followers. And I, I think that's because he's doing exactly as you've just said, Lenwood, he's, he's using social, in, in this case, LinkedIn, um, he's writing articles, he's regularly posting content, he's, he's active. Um, and he's talking not just to his customers, um, and when he does talk to his customers, he's talking from the heart, right? Um, you know, the, 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 the outcomes that he's looking to it, to achieve, um, the experiences he's looking to deliver to his customers. He's also talking to his people, um, and putting effort into equality and ensuring that, you know, their skills program is, is geared towards, 
not only hiring you know the right people but ensuring their own people are upskilled um and they recently got rid of um having a degree as a mm. like qualification that you need in order to to work at their company and for me that's a that's a that's massive right when we think and we've talked before about the future of work um you know the way we learn today is very different or the way we should be learning today <laughs> Because it's still enforced, right? Well, not enforced, but encouraged. You know, go to sixth form, go to uni. Um, but the way we learn, get a job, stay in it for life. <laughs> What's that? Get a job, stay in it for life. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and not only sort of Delta Airlines, but but Ed Bastian is embracing that and and kind of sharing that with his two hundred and twenty thousand followers on LinkedIn. It seems like there's either so, so there there's two different buckets of executives who aren't doing social. There's the ones who actively are against it. And then there's maybe the others who just don't know how or don't know why they would. And I think it's important to, for them to understand, even if like you're doing all of these great things for your people and, but you're like, you're not presenting yourself and kind of, sharing to the world like that it's happening and instead you're more worried about what your peers are going to think you know and like if you're more concerned about what your competitors are going to think of you not having a suit on in your profile picture by by being a little bit vulnerable and telling the literal world what you do for your people and all these things that you truly stand for it opens up the floodgates for recruiting and business and like who cares about what your competitors and your peers like perceive you it's yeah like, yeah, they're fine. um well i remembered my point from before and it's, it really <laughs> connects to what what was your point from before then what tell us with, with Brittany, which which is that you don't want to be the last to build the community you the ceo <laughs> is the community leader Get to building your community through. Bang that, so bang that table once more. Oh yeah, <laughs> just, 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 just <laughs> actually, shaking, yeah. shaking your camera. I'm telling you, you don't. <laughs> you don't want to be the last to build your community, and that is the, that is just the key. I mean, you've got, you've got to get to building your community. Um, you know, community of people, like, candidates, customers, yeah. prospective customers, the yeah. whole the whole shebang. And Up you build that community by sharing your purpose, sharing your values, and getting them to buy in on an emotional level. I have to say, I have to say, Jess Flack today, I mean, all of her... All He's of on her fire. Shows, she is absolutely on fire. On yeah. fire. I think, absolutely brilliant. My goodness. I think we might need her on. Every, everyone's a, every one of these, I'll tell them. you what, Jess, go back through this again. Every one of these is a post. Every one of these is a post. <laughs> it's it's absolutely it's, cool. She's a, she's a, all these are blogs. <laughs> it's phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. So, Adam... Yeah, so, so this obviously isn't a CEO. This this is my kind of post of the week. Uh, and uh, some years ago, Tim and I uh, were engaged by a company and the head of marketing at that company was Catherine. And she said to us, uh, marketing doesn't work anymore. What are we going to do about this? And that's how we developed the concept uh, with, with support from her of the social org. And uh, what's lovely is that that some of her posts are proper thought leadership articles, but some of her posts are like that that last one, which is my post of the week, of her basically smiling, saying, uh, my son's carer uh, has, has uh, got COVID. And just recently, I've embraced the idea that, that actually that's part and parcel of the working world now. You know, where once upon a time, I would have seen this as being a... a flag against me for lack of commitment now it is just the way life is but i love the fact that this is a post which is just her smiling you know and that lights up your newsfeed you know there's no sales pitch in here there's no i'm being really clever she's written some really clever stuff and if you go back and look at some of her posts 
there are some incredibly insightful things collecting data from large swathes about what works and what doesn't and why it works and what kind of content engages people but equally lots of it is very human as well and i think that that you know we often talk about humanizing content and the importance of humanizing content and the importance of of being ourselves and bringing our whole selves to to whichever platform it is we're on and i, I just love it when people do that when they share something which is uh here's a picture of me and the dog on the beach or here's a picture of me it's not to the exclusion of everything else obviously because unless you're running a, a pet shop then posts about your dog don't drive recognition necessarily for what you need but showing the complete you showing the fact that you're having a good day or a bad day or that you've taken some time out or that you're you're reconnecting with friends i think it's just just lovely so in the last five minutes what i wanted to do was find out from you what your first car was <laughs> so, so i'll go first yeah. my first car was a, a white renault 4 okay. with the gear stick in the um in the dashboard yeah it was the 1100 version and i was able to and i i raced a mate of mine who had a mini 850 and i won <laughs> wow shall i go next yeah yeah uh mine was a, a mark one a Vauxhall cavalier pale blue and uh and i wrapped it around a telegraph pole <laughs> <laughs> On a country lane, there was an oncoming HGV around the corner. You know, shouldn't have been. It shouldn't have been on that road. It was the road was too small, I could, and I couldn't squeeze between the hedge and the uh, and the lorry because there was a telegraph pole there. <laughs> mm. I I had a little fender bender on my. Oh, oh go ahead, Eric. That's it. Wow. it we've got, got a, we've got one from one from the old Chrysler one eighty, then an Austin and Maxi. Austin Maxi, that sounds like John. Blue yeah, that's a. Me. So that that's that's Eric and his Ford Capri. Is, is that a Mark Two, isn't it? That's a Mark Two Ford Capri, well spotted, um, bought in yeah. Falkirk. I was I I came home from college one day and said to my dad, I'm going to buy a car, a Vauxhall Chevette, that my friends and I have rewired at college with flat twin and earth lighting cable. Um, and he said, "No, you're not. That's a fire trap. That's gonna, that's gonna die." Um, so I'll tell you what: um, if you save up five hundred pounds, I'll put five hundred pounds. So there's a guy at my work selling a Ford Capri, and it's been garaged, and he uses it on a Sunday, and it's immaculate, and it's one from Cologne. Uh, it's German. It's got a German handbook, and I love that car, AUR fifty X. Unfortunately, I was too young to appreciate it, and I ruined it. And when I handed it in to trade it in for a Fiat Uno Turbo. <laughs> <laughs> It, li it limped onto the four four court because I just abused it and killed it. Yeah, they so were rear wheel drive, right? The four rear wheel three. drive. I felt, yeah. and and my name's Doyle, right? So yeah, I used to have the theme chin from the professionals on the tape. <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah. Brandy. I had a Ford as well, Mustang. It was maroon. Ford Whoa. Mustang. <laughs> wow! Yeah. yeah but hold on, there were some really I... crap before <laughs> Mustang. <laughs> that would have been very intimidating. I'm not. I uh, am yeah, not bragging. My younger brother makes fun of me all the time. You know, says I was like that. I was that girl in high school. So, and I did also get in a. Like I said, it was a little bit more than a fender bender. Someone stole a stop sign, so I drove right through it. The stop sign was missing. There was supposed to be a stop sign there. I drove right oh, through no. it. And someone uh, hit me from behind. I called my mom to let her know, and she laughs. They still laugh about it. My family makes fun of me, the fact that I got into an accident because someone stole a stop nice. sign. So my, uh, a, a few master, triggers really. there. No. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. A few triggers there for me. Glenwood. My uh, first car was a 1981 two-tone green Buick Regal. Nice. With a rebuilt 350 small block engine. Buick Regal, wow. which, Buick, which, which year? 1981. 1981 Buick Regal. 1981 Buick. Two-tone wow. green. Two-tone green. 1981. Years old. Eric's desperately trying to find one. <laughs> and the first weekend I had it out, I had a little fender bender. 
I went to <laughs> I went to a place, the I went to a place called the Cove where all the kids, cool kids hung out. And uh, I was so excited to be driving my car. I had just gotten my license. I was 15 years old. I'm out the window. Yeah, I was. I and and I. Get your license I, at I put the car into reverse instead of drive and slammed the tailpipe in, uh, into the uh, through the tie back tire, cracking the uh, cracking the uh, shock absorber. I found one Beautiful. in sage. I found one in sage green. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. You and yeah. Regal, baby. Oh, that yeah. thing can move. <laughs> nice. nice. Adam. What about you, Yeah, Adam? so I had a 1982 Ford Fiesta XR2. No. Well, exactly. With the, with the oh. XR2. Wheels. Did, that, did you get the, did you get the, the um, hair dryer with it as well? Ha ha. Uh, what was what was really interesting is that I, I it was it was a nice little car certainly as a first car it was a nice little car and uh, it got stolen and uh, it was recovered from a uh, a pub car park like three weeks later and uh, it was an insurance write off and then after about six months I got a phone call from the police saying are you the owner of this car and uh, N U V two eight five Y was the registration plate. Um, and I said, uh, I was. And they said, but it's still registered for you. It's been used in a bank robbery. <laughs> How exciting was that, eh? And I said, no, no, that went about six months ago. And, and that was the end of it. But uh, it was a great little car. What great color? Car. Silver. In silver. Silver XR2. Exactly like that. I mean, that's Woo! it. But if you use that's it as a getaway. Bank, that's exactly, the getaway that's car. exactly it. Yep. Exactly. If you used it as a bank robber, you couldn't have anybody in the back, could you? You'd, be, you'd have to move the seats to get let yeah, yeah. get in, get in, get in, get in. Yeah. I, always, I always loved the, you know, being a taller guy, I always loved, um, uh, it was really funny. Uh, you know, I had a Capri when I was an apprentice electrician, and my mate had a Cortina, one had an Escort, um, and the other mate had a Fiesta, and we could all open and start each other's cars with our keys. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. My, I actually, I had it. My first car actually was a Ford Escort Mark One, which I had on the field when I was fifteen. And you could start it with a knife. <laughs> you could get in the door with, with a, with a, as in a knife and yeah. fork. You could use the, you could use a knife and get and start it with a knife. Well, uh, my, 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 we, we, my, cut, my, we cut the roof off because we wanted to have a converted. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that's what you do. That's wow. A, um, my, mine was an eight, 1981 Capri, so you could open it by sneezing next to the door. <laughs> So thank you everybody for um, uh, tuning in today. R really appreciate yeah, it. You. I think we've had a great debate um, and loads and loads and loads of interaction. Um, thank you so much for everybody thank that's, that's left a comment. Um, and um, if we missed you, I'm sorry, but I've tried to get up as many as I can. And by the way, we're not here next week. Um, so it's a public holiday. Um, it's Good Friday in the UK. Uh, well, I won't be here and Eric won't be here and Adam won't be here and Alex won't be here. So. Um, we won't be here next week. Yeah. But we will be here the week after. All right. Have a good Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Bye. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye.